All right, let's go over VLC uh, and why I don't really use it. Yesterday's video, I kind of bashed on it. Eh, didn't kind of, I definitely did. But I wanted to go over why I kind of had this frustration. That whole video was actually made out of frustration. So I actually was having a lot of lockups and uh, the process just kept hanging for me uh, on my Linux boxes. But I understand a lot of Windows users use the crap out of VLC. And when I came in and was like, hey, you need to stop using it and use a different media player, I got this text mm -hmm. message. <laughs> At 10 something in the morning from my cousin that is still on like Windows 7, <laughs> you know, and when I got that message and he was just like, hey, don't tell me what video player to use. I was like, uh oh, I need to check my video. And I checked my video and bam, 60% like to dislike ratio. That is insane. I was like, oh my God, the internet armies are destroying this video. <laughs> So I immediately jumped on and uh, tried to do some damage control with uh, replying to comments and uh, rewatch the video a little bit. And I was like, all right, well, I need to make a follow up just to clear the air with VLC. Uh, first off, should everyone switch their video player from VLC to something else? And the answer to this, it depends. A lot of the comments I was getting, I'm going to say, yeah, you probably should switch. If you're only using it to play movies and you're not really using any of the advanced features of VLC, yeah, you probably should switch. So uh, that probably is a lot of people out there. And uh, that's why I made the alternatives video. So what do I mean by that? Let's give, give you actual examples. That's, that's the biggest thing. So for me, I'm going to show, I'm gonna actually, let's go on the desktop. I'm going to just show an apples to apples comparison and let's return after you watch this. That way you can see the differences of just what I'm talking about. So uh, let's let's hit up the desktop real fast and then uh, we'll come back and talk about what I'm about to say and, and why I'll use a different media player. All right, so. I'm going to launch VLC player and just kind of show what the default settings look like. So right here, you immediately are prompted with the privacy network access policy. So says, hey, do you want to allow metadata? Do you want to regularly check for VLC updates? Here is where you, you need to probably set everything. So you can easily go uncheck these. You wouldn't constantly be bombarded with updates and things that kind of would annoy you. So let's hit continue here. Now, this is the default setup for VLC. You know, I'm preaching the choir here probably, but there is a lot of things that you can do in VLC. You can, you can actually access network streams. You can access capture devices. You can do a lot of things with VLC. There's a ton of features to it. That's why so many people love it. But it's also kind of why I don't like it because really the only thing I use VLC for is playing videos. But I just wanted to kind of just show this aspect of VLC as just a basic, you know, just, just as a reference for this video. So with that said, uh, I just wanted to flip through the menus real fast, show the basic setup, and then flip over to something else. Now for this is what I actually recommended was MPCHC. Now this was actually uh, forked and this is the updated version that had been recently updated on March 23rd. Uh, so I, I'm gonna actually go ahead and install this version of it. Uh, it just kind of goes through some basic fixes just to showcase the difference between VLC and uh, Media Player Classic. There was also other things in the video, uh, other people recommending MPC BC, which, or BE, which was Black Edition. Uh, this is also a good fork as well, and in, in I just wanted to showcase two different kinds of forks here. Uh, but Media Player Classic, all the codecs, everything's built in. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. So let's just walk through the installation in Windows here, just to kind of showcase the difference. And we'll launch in. So just like VLC, do you want to update for updates? We'll just say no. So here you go. Now, this is very reminiscent of his XP Media Player Classic. That's where they get all the design from. It's a lot more simplistic. Uh, as you see right here, as we flip through, you have just basically player information. So if you're only playing videos, this is where I really like the simplicity of it. And also the speed, you do pick up some stuff because you don't have this massive feature set of all the things you can do in VLC. You can do conversions, you can access 
actual uh, streaming stuff. Uh, you can actually access live streams. There's just a whole host of things with VLC, which is amazing. But most people, again, just use it to play media. So I want to actually show a video recorded in MP4 AAC. Now, if you're not sure of what I'm saying right now, that's okay. Just know that this Kodak uh, back 10 years ago would require you to install an entire full feature or a mega pack from K-Lite. Uh, and, and that's really, you know, kind of sucks. But these days, pretty much every media player has uh, their own codecs built in, much like VLC. Vi VLC was kind of the pioneer of this. So let's do that. All right, so I went ahead and copied uh, upcoming video, 17 Linux tips in 10 minutes. Uh, that's coming out later this week. And if we just hit uh, open with, and we'll actually open this with VLC to start out with. Let's see what it does. And here we are. This is VLC, what you see. Now let's open with Media Player Classic. And here's Media Player Classic's version of it. Very, very similar <laughs> as you flip through. It's just a completely different uh, different way of doing things. It's very interesting. I have the video actually muted here. So uh, just some fun, fun little tips, things in that video. But uh, flipping through, they're very, very similar. And if you've used VLC for 10 years and you use all those advanced features, by all means, stick with VLC. I just wanted to showcase the difference in Windows, how this works. But let's jump over to Linux now. And I want to show some of the issues with it because VLC kind of stinks in Linux compared to other, uh, the opposition. And then also uh, when you get into Android and those other ones, obviously don't use VLC. There's much better options there as well because uh, as you'll see from the Linux base, VLC is just not great in the Linux environment. So here we go. Let's uh, go ahead and open this. Right now I have it set on celluloid. You just launch it. Bam. Oh man, I had a scary face at the front there. Uh, but anyways, flipping through, you see just very, very easy and I just kill it and it's just gone. And I can just launch into this a bunch of times. It just works. I can do it, do it over and over, never run into a problem. Any of these just super quick, just very, very fast flipping through just no problem. But when I go into VLC and let's go ahead and do that. There's VLC, we'll quit, launch again, launch again, launch again. You gonna launch? You gonna launch? No, you always get stuck VLC. It's gotten so bad, I would set a hotkey to kill my VLC service. The fact I could repeat it over and over and over on Debian-based distributions and Arch-based distributions, it's why I got so frustrated with VLC. I said that at the beginning of my last video. I should have correlated that to this experience. This was very frustrating. Now, obviously, I just set a hotkey to kill the VLC uh, <laughs> process. And that hotkey just does kill all dash nine VLC and it kills all the processes. So if you still love VLC and you want to just deal with this in Linux, by all means, you totally can. I, I've been doing it for a year and a half. That's how much, uh, how long I've been dealing. And I think it just hit a frustration, a boil over point where I was just like, no more. I refuse. So now I, I'm using celluloid and P, uh, MPV. Uh, another one I wanted to show as well uh, was SM Player, as that's a kind of an important one as you're going through here. As uh, you know, SM Player is a very another one that's very simplistic. So now that you got a base understanding of what I'm dealing with on my desktop, both in the Windows and Linux realm, you can see my frustration on obviously in the Linux realm and which what led to that video. On the Windows realm, not so much. Honestly, you could pretty much just stick with VLC and be fine. Uh, it's not horrible or bad in, in Windows as pretty much every Windows uh, program out there is considered bloated. I mean, <laughs> trying to find a minimalist Windows program, kind of a joke in itself. So for you Windows users, eh, you don't really have to switch. However, with uh, MPC or Media Player Classic, I did run into a couple myths in the comments, which I want to dispel. Uh, I say try both and see what affects you, how you like it better for your, your particular setup, because everyone will have varying degrees of success. Uh, first off, they run pretty much the same. Media Player Classic, VLC, they're both using, a, you know, they're both able to decode like AAC and any pretty much modern video format out of the gate. There's no codecs to install. That's all from like Windows 7 era, 
2010. Don't worry about that. I got a lot of comments saying, I don't want to install codecs. I'm like, what? Uh, that's not really a thing anymore, man. Codecs are kind of a thing in the past for the most part for pretty much any video player out there. But with that said, uh, let's move on past that. What about the actual performance? What about the minimal interface? Now, obviously, I'm more partial to MPC or Media Player Classic because of the minimal setup and also the minimal uh, feature set which I think this is a boon. However, a lot of people, if you're using extra features that aren't in Media Player Classic, VLC is your best bet. So it just depends on you as a user. But even more so than that, uh, on Media Player Classic, I get better performance. I mean, I, I do. For me personally, I only, I, I only use it to play videos and it launches faster. It does everything quicker. Am I definitely splitting the hairs here on Windows? Yeah. Both launch pretty darn fast compared to a lot of other Windows programs. But for me, I still think Media Player Classic wins out in the end. So that's the differences between the two. Test it yourself. Uh, me personally, I'm not very impressed with a lot of the hardware acceleration in VLC. Uh, but again, it depends on your hardware. And I don't want to show some benchmark test and skew it in any way as you should be the one to decide what's best for you in your system. But jumping over to the Linux side, honestly, I could never use VLC in Linux again. I've used it for about a year and a half in uh, Linux, and that's where most of my frustration lies. As you saw in the video, it kept locking up on me. I continually had that issue. I continue to have performance issues. The hardware acceleration, not nearly as good as MPV and MPV-based front ends like Celluloid, SM Player, all those fantastically uh, work way better. Is fantastically a word? Probably not, but we're going to say it's fantastically. Automagically, it's just so much better. <laughs> and when it comes to that, that's why I say celluloid or SM player would just be so much better for a Linux user. Some people just like the plain Jane vanilla MPV player, which you can totally rock that. There's nothing wrong with it. I do like a little bit more of the shiny front end with celluloid and SM player, respectively. And I do notice a big difference in performance where Windows, it's negligible. It's very hard for me to tell the difference between one to the other. Over here, when I'm do testing VLC to celluloid, I notice a substantial difference in speed, load times, uh, how well and smooth the videos run. I was running into a lot of latency issues with VLC. There was just a whole host of issues, not just one or two, not just hey, it locks up, but it got to the point where I was like, this is hot garbage. And that's why I said that thing at the very beginning. And that was my personal experience. So that's what this whole video was about, just to clear the air, as there was no context over me saying that at the very beginning of my VLC video in, in the past video. So uh, I really apologize if I offended any VLC lovers out there. It's still great software when it works for me in Linux. And honestly, in Windows, I don't have any qualms. I don't have anything bad to say about it in Windows other than the fact I, I don't really utilize its massive feature set. So to me, it, it doesn't make sense. But for you, you decide. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. And uh, if you got that impression, I'm sorry. At least I didn't call it the devil. So with all that, let me know in the comments. Hopefully this video is above 60% like to dislike ratio. <laughs> and with that, a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.